Okay guys, so today I think I have something super cool to show you. That's right, in this video I'm going to show you how you can remake the distant grab system from Half-Life Alex, And we will do so in three steps. First, be able to interact with an object with a ray. Then, check the velocity of the controller. And finally, make the object jump exactly to the player's end position. So, I hope you guys will enjoy this video and if you do, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below, it's very important for the channel. And of course, shout out to my Patreon who are the ones making it possible. And if like them, you want to get access to the source code of all of my projects and exclusive content, join us, link in the description. Okay, so I'm inside Unity. As always, I made a very simple VR setup with hand presence and my goal will be to grab this red cube while here using the Half-Life Alex distance grab. But the first step is of course to interact with it from far away. Now, as you can see, on the complete XR region setup, I have here a ray interactor. And now if I simply select this cube, make sure that it has a rigid body and a box collider. And if I add a XR grab interactable, we should already be able to interact with it with the ray that we have. So for this, let's find out by clicking on play. And as you can see, if I point the ray to the red cube and then I press on the grip button, I can grab this cube from far away. But more than that, with the thumbsticks, I can also rotate it and move it near or far from me. This is awesome. But that's not it because if now I unmaximize these windows and that I go in the XR ray interactor of maybe my right hand over there. So this ray interactor. As you can see, I have a parameter to force a grab. So let's select it. And now if I try to grab this cube again, as you can see, it snaps directly to my hand and I can now move it with my right hand. But of course, this is not enough for us because the goal of this tutorial will be to turn this system and make it wait for the flick of the hand to make the cube jump towards the player. So let's find out how we can do this. And the first thing that we want is, of course, to not make this XR grab interactable be directly moved by the ray. So let's select the cube, right click on the XR grab interactable and remove this component because we are going to add our own XR grab component that we can call XR Alex grab interactable. Let's double press on enter and let's open this script in Visual Studio. Okay, so this script will need to override the XR grab interactable. For this, we can write at the top using Unity Engine dot XR dot interaction dot toolkit. And instead of mono behavior over there, we need to write XR grab interactable. There you go. This way, as you can see, if I remove both the start and the update function, and if I do override, I can override all of these functions that are inside the XR grab interactable. And the function that you want to override in our case is the on select and third. Here, make sure to use this one with the select enter event argument because the other one is deprecated. And there you go. And now to make this interactable not move using the ray, what we can do is make sure that we are interacting with a ray and not with another interactor with if args.interactor object is xarray interactor. And if it's the case, what we can do is set the track position to false the track rotation to false and the throw on detach to false as well. And now in the case that it is another interactor, what we can do is do the same, but instead set the three element to true. And there you go, as simple as this. And then let's go back in Unity to make sure that we can interact with this cube, but we cannot move it anymore. And there you go. Now, if I point the ray and then I try to grab this cube like before, as you can see, I can grab it, but it doesn't move. So this is perfect because now we will be able to wait and check the velocity of the interactor before jumping this cube to the player's hand. So let's see how we can check the velocity of the interactor in the XR Alex grab interactable script. Okay, so for this, let's add two new parameters at the top a private XR ray interactor called ray interactor and also a private vector3 
call previous position, which will store the previous position of our array. And now let's add back the update function that we deleted earlier. This was a mistake, by the way. And in the case that we are selecting this interactable and that the first interactor selecting this object is a XR array interactor, what we can do is compute the velocity of this ray interactor. And for this, we can do vector3 velocity equals ray interactor dot transform dot position minus previous position and delete everything by the time because of course the velocity is computed by the difference in position divided by the difference in time. So this seems correct to me. <laughs> and finally, let's set back the previous position to be the current position of the interactor. There you go. We can, of course, initialize the previous position and the ray interactor when we start interacting with this object. So for this, inside this unselect editor, let's do ray interactor equals xr ray interactor args dot interactor object. And finally, previous position equals ray interactor dot transform dot position. And there you go, everything is ready. We now have a velocity that we can use. And what we want to do is, of course, check that the velocity of the player's hand is above a certain threshold. And in this case, jump this interactable to the players. So for the threshold, we can go at the top and add a public float velocity threshold that I'm going to set initially to two. And now, if the velocity dot magnitude is above this velocity, threshold. This is where we can make the interactable jump. So just to test now, we can first make it drop. This will make sure that we release the interactable and will not make any bug. And finally, just to test, we can set the interactable rigid body to a default value. But first, we need to find the interactable rigid body. And for this, I'm going to overwrite the awake function and create at the top a private reference to the interactable rigid body. And after calling the base.awake, we can do interactable rigid body equals get component of type rigid body. There you go. And now using this interactable rigid body, we can do dot velocity equals something by default. So vector 3.up. This is of course just for testing before. Afterward, we will change this value to make this interactable jump to the players. But now let's go back to Unity and test what we made. There you go. This is already really cool. Now, as you can see, if I point the ray to the cube, nothing happens. But now if I do a little flick of a hand, as you can see, the cube jumps just a little bit. But there is a little issue with this currently. As you can see, if I keep moving my hands while holding the grip button, the cube move infinitely to the top. So we need to make sure that this only happens once. And to do this, let's go back once again to our script. Okay, so to make sure that this jump happens only once, we need to add here at the top a private boolean called can jump that we can set to true. And now in this if statement, we can also make sure that we can jump. And if we did, we can set this can jump to false. This way, this will only happen once. And we can reinitialize this boolean when we select enter. So over there in this if statement, let's do can jump equals true. And now if we go back to Unity, as you can see, no more problem. We can only make the cube jump only once. But now is the tricky part of the tutorial because of course we are using a default value at the time to make the cube jump. But our goal will be what will be to make this cube over there jump directly to the position of our hands. But how can we do this? Now, to explain you this better, I've prepared something over there. So when you are throwing an object at a certain velocity, at a certain angle, this is what happens. We have now a ballistic motion. And if you put it into writing, this is the equation that are changing the movement of a rigid body after you give it a certain velocity with a certain angle at the start. Now, if we look at this equation on the x and y value, as you can see, we get this thing over there. So it means that on the x, it's actually a linear motion. 
And on the y value, it is a quadratic motion, so a kind of curve over there. And now our goal will be what? Will be if we have a certain angle, what needs to be the velocity to make always the cube jump to the player? And for this, we need to do a little bit of math. So if we take this little equation that defines the ballistic movement, if we rewrite here this first equation to separate the time, we get this value over there. So time equals x divided by the speed multiplied by cos theta. Now, if we replace here the time on this second equation by what we find here on the third element, we get this big thing here that we can rewrite like this. And if we take this last equation and that we separate the speed square, we get this big thing over there, which is exactly what we need. So this express the speed that we are searching for based on the gravity, the difference on x position, the angle at which we are shooting, and here the y is the difference in height between the two objects. And as you can see, I've written already this uh, big equation in C sharp over there, and I'm going to compute this velocity in our script using this equation. So let's see how this looks. Okay, so for this, let's write a new function called public vector three compute velocity. There you go. So in this function, as you can see, we need first the difference in position between the player and our cube. For this, we can do vector three diff equals ray interactor dot transform dot position minus transform dot position. But in the equation, remember that we need the difference in x value and in y value. So let's compute both of these. Let's first do diff x z equals new vector three diff dot x zero diff dot z. Perfect. So this is only the vector on the x and z axis. So not taking into account the height, which is what we want. And let's compute its length with float diff x z length equals diff x z dot magnitude. There you go. Now for the difference in height, let's simply do float diff y length equals diff dot y. This one is actually pretty simple. Now next, we need to have a certain angle. So for this, we can simply create a new parameter at the top called public float jump angle in degree and set it initially to 60. And as the name mentioned, this will be an angle set in degrees, but the cosinus and the function needs a radiant. So let's do float angle in radian equals jump angle in degrees multiplied by mat f degree to radian. This will make sure that we have a radian at the end and that we are converting the degree into radian. And finally, this is where we need to compute the jump speed based on this big equation from before. Okay, so let's simply pass here this equation written in C sharp, and you will be able also to find it in the description below. So these two line of code, if you don't want to rewrite them from scratch and make sure that they work. But now that we get the correct jump speed to make the cube jump towards the player, we can build the jump speed vector that will be the final thing we need to apply to the rigid body. And to create a desired jump velocity vector, we can do jump velocity vector equals diff xz dot normalize and multiply this by mat f cos angle in radiant and then multiply by our jump speed. And finally add a vector three dot up multiply by mat f dot sin or angle as well, and then multiply by jump speed. There you go. And finally, we can simply return our jump velocity vector. There you go. And this is the end we've managed to create the compute velocity function to get the desired velocity to make the cube jump to the player. So let's simply call this function into the update when we are trying to jump. And so here, over there on this line of code, let's replace the vector 3.up by compute velocity. There you go. And it is as simple as this. <laughs> let's go back to Unity to find out how this works. Now, if I click on play, and there you go. As you can see, it works. 
If I point the ray to the cube and that I do the little flick of my hands, it always jumps to the player's hands directly. This is awesome. And as you can see, this works in all case scenario with both ends and on all surface, even if I'm far or near from the cube. And something also cool that I just noticed right now is that you can stop the cube mid-air and try to flick it back to your hand. So this is awesome. And there you go, guys. As you can see, with a little bit of physics, we can do some amazing things. And by the way, if you want to read more about ballistic motion, I will leave also some documentation for you in the description below. A big shout out to the new Patreon of this week. And if like them, you want to get access to the source code of all of my project and exclusive content, join us, link in the description below. But thank you for watching and see you very soon. Bye bye.